Let the church say amen. amen. As long as I know I got a seat in God's kingdom, yes. it's all right. Amen. Give it all and praises unto God the Father, the Son, and to the blessed Holy Ghost. What a joy and a privilege it is to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. One more time. Amen. Another day that the Lord has blessed and kept us. Amen. And I'm so glad about it. Amen. As many of you probably hear my voice already, this is the reason why Minister Howard and Dr. Mike has been carrying on the work of the service this morning. I told them I'm saving my voice for 15 minutes. Amen. And 15 minutes. That's right, Mother Debrief. Take it. 15 minutes. <laughs> 15 minutes. So we're thankful for 15 minutes today. Amen. The choir says, as long as God's seat in God's kingdom, it's all right. Yeah. Just want to remind the choir uh, first Sunday, 3 p.m. at Holy Temple. The ushers, uh, church family, come and come to get us to the Holy Temple for their anniversary, Amen. ushers' anniversary. The evangelist Dr. Knight will be preaching that morning as I will actually be taking a vacation day, so I will not be here, but I'll meet you there. Amen. 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 And just Make note that on the third Sunday, if the Lord allow us, we're going to start a kind of three-part series. The Word. Preach it, teach it, live it. The Word. Preach it, teach it, live it. So let us look forward to that on the third Sunday in July. Amen. Again, as we has already been stated, happy Father's Day to all the wonderful fathers. I looked around and uh, uh, they asked for all the fathers to stand just about every male in here stood, uh, except about three. So that means you guys are you behave yourself. Amen. <laughs> I didn't look over to my left, I didn't know whether he still there with or not. So I... <laughs> amen. 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 And, but you know, but you know, many have fulfilled the position of fathers having not actually been a biological father. So to all those who have biologically and also who have stepped in as spiritual. Amen. Thank you for all this to you. Amen. Thank you for your guidance that you have given. Now, as we proceed forward, I want to make sure that we have covered everything that I want to just highlight there. The Word. It's time for the preached word. If you return with us to the book of Psalms. Psalms, the 68th division of Psalms. Psalm 68. And we're going to read the first six verses of Psalm 68. If you have it, say amen. amen. Psalm 68, verse 1. Let God arise. Let his enemies be scattered. Let them also that hate him flee before him. As smoke is driven away, so drive them away. As wax melteth before the fire, so let the wicked perish at the presence of God. But let the presence, let, but let the righteous be glad. Let them rejoice before God 
Yea, let them exceedingly rejoice. Sing unto God. Sing praises to his name. Extol him that rideth upon the heavens by his name, Jah, and rejoice before him, a father of the fatherless, and a judge of the widows, is God in his holy habitation. God setteth his solidarity in families. He bringeth out those which are bound with chains, but the rich rebellious dwell in a dry land. Verse 5 says, A father of the fatherless and a judge of the widows is God in his holy habitation. Pray with us. Gracious Father, Lord, thank you again today for another opportunity that you have allowed us to assemble here in this holy temple. Father, we ask the Lord that I will send the preacher, the Holy Spirit, that it may use my tongue to preach your word, use my mind as a storehouse of your wisdom. Let that same spirit of dwell with these your children, dear Lord, that they may feel the presence of the Holy Spirit in this place, that they will say it was good to have been in the house of the Lord. One more time, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Again, if we just pray for us as we do, as the Lord has allowed us to do today. My voice on Friday began to slip away. It's kind of like Kind of like this. Nicholas has a little cold, and I can't shake him. And so whatever he develops, ultimately I develop it. And uh, it was Thursday night. We had to prepare ourselves to get up early Friday morning to go to. RDU to pick up these three lovely young ladies that you'll see sitting with us today. And uh, I think I more so than my wife was like a seven year old before Christmas. I couldn't sleep. <laughs> I was up all night, Thursday night, basically just trying to make sure I didn't know sleep. And then their flight was an hour late. And I had to work Friday night. And my body just got tired, and this time it's the voice that was the uh, sustained the brunt of my tiredness. So uh, Friday night and Saturday morning, I just could not talk, and the voice is slowly coming back. But we do thank God for the electronic enhancement that we're able to. Uh, project our voice out this day. Amen. But we thank God for His Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for my sins and your sins. Whether you accept it or not, He died. He died for us. And I want to let you know that no matter who you are, no matter what walk of life you come from, we all need a Savior. And I don't understand. I, 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 I'm, I still have to keep it within my 15 minutes, but I just gotta, I just gotta say this because, because I, 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 I saw something that uh, uh, Sister Bono uh, it did happen to be on social media that said that, that there was this, uh, this uh, pastor in Tennessee who also happens to work uh, with the sheriff department in. Tennessee, and he had uh, uh, his opinion that was posted. Uh, uh, actually, they posted a clip of his sermon where he said that every every uh, LB uh, uh, LGBTQ individual should be executed. And they asked him, "Say, how can you reconcile that with?" Being a law enforcement officer, how can you how can you justify that belief in being working in law enforcement? They say, well, when they come into the sheriff's department, 
to save the vessel, uh, I know that they have a right to be there because they are part of the public. So I, 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 I treat them accordingly at that. You see, but when it comes to my church, I have to say as to who's members of my church and who can come in to the pews. And I have a problem, Sister Audrey, because the last I checked was that if they can't come into the house of the Lord, if they can't come into the church, how can they receive the word of God that this change can be effected in their life? And I got news for you right now because if you want to execute every LGBTQ because of their lifestyle and what they do, I got news for you that every adultery in the church ought to be executed too. Amen. Every fornicator, every liar, every thief, every murderer, you can't pick and choose what sin you want to recognize. Sin is sin. What you need to do is make up in your mind that you're going to change the status of where you are right now and serve the Lord. See, that's one of the beauties about the forthcoming uh, uh, a series, The Word, Preach It, Teach It, and Live It. See, because the Word will change lives. And you got to preach it, you got to teach it, and you also got to live it. The fifth verse says, A father of the fatherless and a judge of the widows." is God in his holy habitation. God is the one. God is the one who looks, sits high and looks low. He sees all that we have ever done and he knows everything that we have ever crossed our mind. On this Father's Day, when we think about fathers, we think about our earthly fathers and we think about the good times and the bad times. We think about that father figure who made a positive impact in your life. Maybe they have shared wisdom, encouraged you, protected you, showed up when you needed, or provided timely guidance. Those are some of the qualities and characteristics of the fathers that we look for. But I want to let you know that we have a heavenly father. Just as we have an earthly father. And I know that many of us, for some, we, the fathers, have been just relegated to a term or a phrase of a sperm doom. You know those types, the one who The ones who was there for the conception. But some doesn't show up for 18 years. Maybe when the young man signs that basketball contract or that football or does something great in life and then they want to say, that's my boy. When the young lady walks across the stage and is getting her doctor's degree, that's my girl. How can it be your boy and your girl when for 20 years you turned the other way? Seeing them how to struggle, call the mothers everything but a lady out, fussed out, forgot about. But I'm so glad that my heavenly father is a father to the fathers. My heavenly father, when I didn't know any better, still sent his only begotten son, Jesus, to die on the cross. My heavenly father is a judge for the widows. 
Now understand, and, uh, let me break that down for those of you who don't understand because you think that word judge, when most people hear the word judge, they think that you're talking about the judge of the clothes you have on, judge of your character. But here in this sense, the word judge means that he is a protector. He is a provider for the will. And let me tell you something, men, we have a long way to go. We have a lot of things we must do. Even when you think you've done your best, you still got to strive a little more. Just a few weeks ago, we were driving down the road, and Nicholas, Nicholas looked at him. Uh, I did something that pleased Nicholas mighty well. And Nicholas looked and said, Daddy, you're a good man. <laughs> you know, that, 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 that means something. I say, for one, he had to hear something from somebody. Uh -huh. Just to come out of the blue and say, Daddy, you're a good man. Yeah. And just to make sure it was understood, a few days later, he said, Daddy, you're a good man. <laughs> That's wonderful to hear yeah. when a young child can encourage you in such a manner. Jesus. But you know what? They can't say you're a good man when you don't do anything. Yeah. Can't say you're a good man when all around you there is just talking down about you. In order to be a good man to the child, you gotta be a good man to the parent. Amen. Father's Day. Father's Day is more than just Father's Day is more than just a few minutes of glory. And saying that I have a child. You gotta show up. You gotta be there. I know situations happen in life where sometimes mom and dad they don't get get along together and they're not around each other. They don't spend time together. But I tell you one thing to every male, to every man, and even to the women, you there is nothing in this world that you ever happen that will make you not be around your child. Amen. God didn't intend it this way. He didn't bring it out this way. He said that for this reason, man shall leave his mother and father and cleave it to his own wife. You know, when we do it God's way, it works out. When we do it our way, things get messed up. The Sunday school lesson this morning said something like cleansing, cleansing up this mess. God had to send his son to clean it up. But look here to what, what David what David said. David said, let God arise. Let, let his enemies be scattered. Let them also that hate him flee before him. Let me tell you, church of God, if you, if you hate God, you can't stand in his presence. Amen. You want to flee. If you don't believe, just, just kind of look around. See, see those people you don't like, you don't like being around, do you? You want to try to limit your opportunities around them. And when you don't like God, you know, there are people that don't want to hear you talking about God. When you start talking about God, you talk about, you talk about, uh, you talk about sex, uh, religion, and the politics on the job, they'll stay there. But when you start talking about your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, how the Lord has brought me through, how he picked me up, how he changed my life, they're trying to run this out. I don't want to hear that. Matter of fact, they start calling you, oh, here comes that little Christian, that little holy Lord. She thinks she's more than me. He thinks he's better than me. No, it's not that we're more. It's not that we're better. It's just that we know that God has done something for us. And when we know that God has something done something for us, we want to tell the world that he's been good. Young man asked me, you know, told me the other day, Deacon Bay, you know how they do on the job sometimes. They say, they say, when I grow up, I want to be just like you. I blew one, one young man's mind the other day. See, because he was talking about he wanted a position like mine. He, he, he wanted to make what he perceived that I'd make. I make. He said, I want to be just like you. When I grew up, I said, want a Christian? <laughs> blew his mind out of that. Didn't know what to say. I want him to be just like me too. I want to be a Christian Amen. when you grow up. Amen. Everybody ought to strive to be just like that. Yes. 
Verse 2 says, as smoke is driven away, so drive them away. As wax metal before the fire, let the wicked perish at the presence of God. See, when God comes around, when you talk about God, when the Spirit of God is around, the wicked, they are just like the smoke. They are driven away. And just like that wax on that candlestick, when that light is, when that fire is there, it melts away. Yes, yes. God can melt the cold heart. The stony heart away. But this is how the wicked re respond. But look at verse 3 that says, But let the righteous be glad. Let them rejoice before God. Yea, let them exceedingly rejoice. See, those who know God, those who serve God, when God is in the midst, they want to thank God for all that He's done. Somebody wants to say, I thank you, Lord, for healing my body. Thank you, Lord, for the food on my table. Thank you, Lord, for washing over my children when all hope seemed to be lost, but God was there. <coughs> sing to God, sing praises to His name. Extol, extol Him that rideth upon the heavens by His name, Yah, and rejoice before Him. The name Yah, J A H, Jehovah. But also notice, if you look at the name, look at hallelujah, what the hallelujah end with? <laughs> hallelujah means praise God. Yeah. We are to praise Him. Amen. Why should we praise Him? Because He's a father to the father. We know Him as a father to the fathers. He's a mother to the motherless. He's a friend to the friendless. He's a doctor to the sick. He's a lawyer for those in trouble. He's a counselor in times of when you need counseling. God is all in all. Not only that, but he's a judge to the wind in his holy habitation. We heard a few weeks ago that, that we, when we prayed, we said, Our Father who art in heaven. We ought to praise him. For he gives us our daily bread just in time. God is a God to the fatherless. He's all that we need. Not only that, but when we sit, when we come into our solitary places, he bringeth out those which are bound in chains, yes. but the rebellious dwell in a dry land. Church of the living God, God will protect you. He will bring you out. If you don't believe me, just look at Paul and Silas. When they was down there in jail, what did they do? They sang a hymn and they prayed a prayer, and God broke their chains loose. The jail shook loose, and God is still God. God is still God. Yes. The God of our fathers, the God of our mothers, He's still able to do just what He said He'll do. Yes. What we need to do, we need to turn off the television a little while. We need to put down the tablet for a little while. Break away from that cell phone for a little while. And we need to commune with God. We need to talk with God. We need to get to know God. See, the problem is we always talk about our children get to know their fathers. We talk about the, how they need a father in the home. Let me tell you something. You need God in the home. Not only do the children need God in the home, you need God in the home. But you're talking about everybody else, what they need. What, what, what are we doing? Are we walking in the newness of life? Are we walking in God's footsteps? Are we studying His Word? Or are we trying to do it our way? We have a way to think, think we know better. We've been thinking we know better for a long time. As a matter of fact, this is how we got in the mess we're in. They're in the God of Eden. They thought they knew better. God said, don't eat of the fruit. It looks appealing. Husband take a bite. He still had free will, but he took the bite. And what happened? It said when Adam bit, sin entered into the world. Why? Because Adam had the law. And men, we still have a responsibility. We still have a duty. And I want to tell you right now, when you look around in this church and about any other church, you see more women than you see men. 
So does that mean, man, you sit back and do nothing? No, it means, man, you just got to stand up and do what God has called you to do. Amen. I've discovered many of things. Like, well, look, it's, it's true. There, there are some things. And women, I want to tell you right now, women, you're great. You're wonderful. You do a lot of things. And thank God for every woman. But let me tell you something. There are some things that a woman just can't do. And just because I say you can't do it doesn't mean that the things you do do if you're on the job doesn't mean that you don't deserve the same pay as a man. But there are some things that a woman just cannot do. So if you got a male in your home, he need a male influence. Because there's some things you just can't do. And I even look around right now. I just look at my look at my grandson. I look I look at Nicholas right now. There are things when I, there's two Nicholas. There's the Nicholas when he's with me. Glory. And there's the Nicholas when he's with his mom and grandma. And it's like night and day. And Amazon shopping, you've seen it here before yourself. You've seen it when my wife had surgery. Nicholas came in here, you sat on that bench over there, and you didn't even know he was in here. That's right. Tell me. Tell me your people. Mama and grandmama came back, and what happened? Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> there are things like that. And there are some things, man, we know that we can't. We can't teach a, teach a girl how to be a woman. We know that. Amen. So when you start walking around saying, I don't need a man, you might not need a man, but that boy needs a man. This is where it comes in, those who are not biological fathers. They step up and they help out. Thank God for the certain programs that are out there. Malik, for the past few years, he's been part of a mentoring program where he helped mentor young boys and trying to help them to understand the things that they need to do. And we need more mentors. We need men who will step up. And although you may not be a biological father, you may not be their father, you can step up and help them to know because you can be a father to the fathers. It doesn't take. There are so many young children out there who are, who, who are, are, are orphans. There are those out there who, who need to be adopted into a good home. And we need to look around and say, what can I do? How can I help somebody? For the truth of the matter is, God adopted us. So if God adopted us and became a father to the fathers, why can't we help someone else? We can do it. Because this is a trying time. My cousin texted me last night and asked me what was a good word because she was talking with some of her friends and they was talking about just like Teresa said that this country is in a bad shape. Yes. And they talked about the fact that say that uh, Say that uh, somebody say that Obama was the last president. She said it's amazing because she had the we know we have a president. I said we have a president, but he's not presidential. That's a difference. He's not presidential. But I told her one thing. Remember that the earth is the Lord and the food is the Lord. The world they can dwell there in. Church of the living God, it doesn't matter who's in the office. You've got to remember who sits high and looks low. You've got to remember he who said his only begotten son. You've got to remember that we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And we have got to live for God. We have got to tell the story. We have got to tell somebody that it had not been for the Lord who was on my side. I don't know where I've been. Let somebody know that I haven't always done right. I haven't always 
and ladies, don't worry, don't worry. If that father, if that biological father won't be a father, you just keep asking the Lord. Walk with the Lord. And I promise you that God will send someone because he said that he's a father to the fathers. And he's judged to the widows. So just keep holding on. Hold on to God's unchanging hand. I pray that you have found a blessing in this word today. I thank God just for the ability just to be able to get this word out. And trust me, if the Lord says so, third Sunday, we will start the series. Preach, teach, and live the word. Because that is what we need to do. We need to live the life before many, before all mankind. Amen. 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 Night is going to come. Dr. Knight is going to come and extend the invitation at this time.